Well, the court ruling that stalled Nevada's universal gun background check initiative turned on a key provision that the initiative's authors included in the text. Now, that initiative, which passed by less than 10,000 votes statewide in 2016, would have required gun sales between private parties to undergo the same background check that happens in gun stores right now. Politics Now co-host Steve Sebelius is here with the initiative's fatal flaw. Steve. Well, Brian and Christiane, it all came down to the money. Uh, the backers of question one could have said all gun sales in Nevada require a background check using the state's existing system, which includes the FBI's NICS database. But that would have attached a fee to, to the background check, and that could have killed the initiative. Instead, question one author said the checks would be conducted by the FBI alone at no cost to the state. That helped the measure pass, but it doomed it in court. The ruling said the initiative improperly tried to force the FBI to conduct background checks for private party sales in Nevada, even though federal law doesn't require a check for those kind of sales. According to the judge, Nevada's laws can't make the FBI do something. But at least one of the initiative's co-authors said the distinction shouldn't make a difference and that the FBI should have done the checks anyway. A background check is a background check. Um, all background checks eventually have to go through the FBI's NICS database. And so whether it goes first through uh, a Department of Public Safety, for example, in Nevada, or whether it goes directly to the FBI, um, it's the same thing. The whole point of a background check for a gun sale is to keep guns out of the wrong hands. Jones, a former state senator, passed a bill during the 2013 legislature very similar to question one, but it was vetoed by Governor Brian Sandoval. Now, question one's proponents argued in court that the governor and Attorney General Adam Laxalt hadn't done enough to implement background checks, but the judge found state officials had made a, quote, real and substantial effort, unquote, to do just that. But Jones noted that Laxalt personally opposed the measure and said state leaders could have found a way to respect the will of the voters. I think that if, if you had someone who was really committed to, to this law, they would have gone to D.C., met with FBI officials, really uh, focused on making sure that there was some way to, to make it happen. It's agreement between the state and, and the FBI in terms of how things are enforced. Um, and I think that uh, if, if you had somebody who was truly committed to, to making it happen, then, then he would have made it happen. Jones agrees that the best way forward in light of Judge Hardy's ruling is to pass another law in Carson City that extends the current gun store background checks to all gun transfers and to charge the required fee. Now, that may or may not be a real possibility, depending on who wins the governor's mansion and the political makeup of the legislature after November's elections. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. And the debate will continue. Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Thanks.